My name is Susanna Farr. I'm the um, Director of Gold Peer Education Development Agency and our um, organization was set up in 2004 to respond proactively to the massive social burden that is impacting um, young people in schools and communities. Um, so many of these, uh, these social determinants are, are robbing young people of not only reaching their potentials but have the, 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 the potential to undermine some of our greatest efforts for, for education. HIV, gangsterism, substance abuse, teen pregnancy, um, and so many of these risk behaviors are, are fueled by poverty, lack of adequate education, lack of adult role models, and, and many of them have, have you know, similar root issues. So our dream has been to see an entire generation of young African leaders, very often labeled as, as victims or, or young people that are, are going to perhaps drop out and, and to see them given the opportunity and the support to, to confront the, 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 the causes underlying their decisions to engage in, in certain behaviors and, and be able to impart a sense of vision and purpose to each one of these young people to not only go through a personal change but to be able to um, have the tools and the, the a futures oriented approach that enables them to then reach out to their peers and, and, and younger learners. Our methodology is is using peer pressure and peer pressure works. We didn't invent it. It's an amazing force for change and, and when given an opportunity to, to influence your peers positively, sometimes the most negative young people are, are, are something in them rises up and they want to be a part of something that is so much bigger um, than themselves. So what we've, we've, we've done is we've developed a, a long-term peer education strategy we, we were informed by four years of, of piloting in, in a diverse community where four schools in close proximity um, were, were, were selected. We, we did assessments. We understood what are the biggest issues facing young people in these communities. And we worked with the most influential teenagers to say, um, how can we create a, a better future? What is the vision that you want to create in your schools? And what are you going to do about it? And so through, through that pilot, we were able to test, develop systems, curriculum, processes, m and &E, and then we further scaled out to, uh, to specific communities in, in um, very different contexts. We chose rural communities, peri-urban communities, urban communities. We looked at different school systems, KwaZulu-Natal, Mpumalanga, Western Cape, certain schools in Botswana and also Zambia, to say how does the peer education model work within these given contexts? and how do we ensure that we are harnessing that incredible influence that young people have over their peers to bring about um, a change in social norms at a school level but also through to the community and how do we get young people very often in, in re very resistant to, to change at a school, how do we get them on board to working with school leadership um, to co-create um, a, a vision of what that school and community could be um, and also help those young people start to think about the decisions they make at, at school can lead to, to where they're going to be in their futures. Um, we equip the most influential young people in grade 10 um, as, as peer educators. They're first and foremost role models. So it starts with me. It's not saying they're perfect, but they're willing to get their hands dirty and to say that, um, that, that it's not just what they say, it's who they are that will make the difference. They were educators, so we trained them with practical and comprehensive skills of how to both formally and informally reach their peers with specific messages both in the classroom as well as out in whether it's in the bar or the church or the sports field in a way that peers can hear this information and act on it and make decisions but it doesn't stop there and sometimes we do more damage than good we've seen it where we give information but we don't identify young people in need of help and link them up to where the, the the help and the adult professional help as well as the resources are. And so young people are trained to do this. And lastly, but most importantly, they identify where are the gaps. And they're part of advocating for change, serving in their communities, getting their hands dirty. Parents, teachers, principals, and community leaders have to be engaged to create that enabling environment for young people to reach other young people. We, we, um, where it was done well, we've seen incredible results in not just reduction of youth risk behavior, but we've also seen an increase in literacy. 
largely because of, we didn't have the capacity to do this in any other language other than English. But although training of peer educators to their peers could happen in a mother tongue, um, engaging in, in so many issues through, through a comprehensive three-year curriculum, um, literacy increased. We saw that school attendance increased, increased dramatically and young kids suddenly realized actually staying at school is an important thing and encouraged their peers to do the same. And we saw that academic um, uh, performance also increased, gender violence and, and, and a myriad of issues because the, 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 the heart of a young person was, was being connected with where they start to think, why do I do the things that I do? Who am I? Where am I going? And when a young person catches that vision for their life, we've seen that it naturally starts to, to ripple over to their peer groups and, and, and beyond that. And they start to actually want to be part of, of seeing change and doing something about it and getting involved in community projects and leveraging other decision makers and holding them account because that change is something that is going to be critical to getting rid of those obstacles which hold them back from their potential and enable them to move forward. Um, I think a key learning in, in everything that we've seen um, piloted, we've, we've recently, um, based on, on an area where we felt we had, had done very well but were also criticized for, was that we had this intensive investment into young people. We saw wonderful human capital, but then after school we were, we were letting them go. And these were young people that, that were suddenly unemployed, didn't have access to tertiary education. And we realized that unless we're connecting them to future opportunities, um, the sustainability of peer education is going to be at risk. And so we've, we've established a future forward program where we are identifying um, how can we see this pipeline of, of young leaders connected and to become the artisans, the welders, the future teachers, and, and really gain the um, further work experience because they've, they've, as peer educators, they've had experience in delivering outputs, working in the, in the communities and, and are, are, have a character and integrity that many companies and entry level, um, in, uh, industries with entry level jobs are, are looking for. We've also seen that when teachers are engaged and understand the resource that peer educators can have in the classroom um, to bring about um, learning outcomes, um, amazing things can, can happen. When parents are supportive, we've seen that, that issues in their own lives, such as alcohol and substance abuse, or, or the fact that they've never thought it's possible to be um, a parent that can be supportive. When they, their children have come back and they've seen that personal change in that young child, we've, we've seen that there have been, been changes in, in parents, but they are critical to any intervention in a, in a school. Um, I think the, the the heart of peer education is that people don't change with information alone. They change when others around them change. And, and I often tell a story of a young boy who, uh, a particular donor said to him, how has this program impacted you? And, and very passionately he said, it's amazing, I'm now stealing less cars. And you can imagine I almost had a, no, that's not what you tell the donor. But that same boy, a year and a half later, is running an anti-crime club in his school. He's got four other orphans back into school because he's understood that they can go back to school and not pay fees. And he's the first person in his two generations to study something beyond school. And if we can see that at a macro level, we will see significant changes because he was a leader. He was always a leader. But that um, leadership was being channeled negatively. And so many of our, of our greatest... Um, agents of change are often those gangsters, the naughty ones, who've never had somebody say, you're worth the best, you can expect the best. And we've seen that when a young person, perhaps they've never even known what a good father or mother is like, because that is the reality, um, realizes that, that they can change a pattern and that the decisions they make now will impact not just the future, their future, but the future of their peers and, and friends. Um, they start to take those small steps towards um, seeing the, those norms changing, where that personal change does lead to a, a, a peer group change and ultimately um, can shift structural changes at a, at a, a community level. We've seen the, the, the merit in working in a group of schools in one geographic area that are served by similar community resources because there's that cross-pollination and they start to compete and inspire each other to actually create a community that is, um, is and challenge the status quo. We've, we've realized that behavior change is not a quick fix. That it will not be achieved through a camp or a training program. The, the, the essence of this working is the quality of the people. Um, and if we can channel negative peer pressure positively, and if we can get champions 
who connect with this at a heart level. Others see what they've got and they want it and it starts to spread. Um, and this is something that, that we realize that if we want to take it to scale, we can't spread ourselves thinly. We must go deep with a few and do it really well so that those few become products and they can then take this on and, and, and scale it up. We've learned that if teenagers, peer educators, are well trained, they, if they've gone through that internalization, they've grappled with these issues and they've started to make different changes in their own lives, they are well placed to really complement learning outcomes in the curriculum. They can deliver effective talk groups with their peers, um, running debates, they can, they can deliver one-on-one -on -one sessions where issues in a young person's life are tenderly confronted and, and they can help refer their peers to help. And they can support in a, in a formal lesson um, plan where a teacher can be a supervisor because young people do listen to young people. So how do we share this with, with other, others? And we've developed a, um, we've tried to package a, a DIY product, which is really the content and some of the methodology, the best practices that we've seen where, where peer education um, in a structured, measurable, long-term um, framework enables other young people to, 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 to change social norms and reach young people. And we believe this can be transferable to the workplace. We've de de delivered a workplace version. If we can get te teachers that are um, exemplary and get them as champions to inspire other teachers, I think that this is a methodology that can be transferable to any context where you're wanting to see change take place. By, by, by using influential um, um, peers to be able to both model that behavior, but to be able to deliver messages in a variety of, of creative ways with their peers um, to, to bring about a tipping point and a movement of, of change towards a common goal. Um, we are seeing the, the, the benefit of technology where you might have one young person who tells their story and you know that that young person has, has got to where they are, they are in, in terms of combating some of these massive issues. That story shared with hundreds of other young people through mix it or whatever communication they are already using to, to talk to their peers about other things um, can inspire in them the possibility that that could be me and, 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 and I can make that change. And I think that within education we're sitting on a, on a mechanism that if we utilize, the, if we allow the co-creation to happen, if we allow young people to give input to what the school could be like, what incredible teaching could look like, and if we give young people the platform to be a part of the change and get their hands dirty and serve their communities, I believe that we're going to see many of our outcomes put on steroids because there's this army of young people that want to be a part of, of changing education. They want to be a part of creating a better future. Um, and they want to actually be able to contrib contribute in a job or, or, or further study beyond their schooling, and they want to put back. So, so we would love to be able to, at district level and provincial level, get the decision makers to know how, do, how can they benefit personally from, from peer education, but share this within a structured way so that it can be systemic, so that every school can either have a deep model where they, they're a feeder of so human capital where hundreds of past peer educators go, can go on and then deliver services to other schools that don't um, have this. But the social burden is impacting on, on education outcomes and that we cannot see them in isolation if we want to see the transformation at the level that, that we need. Thank you.